Hi and welcome to my next video. Today I'm talking about Markovnikov's rule, um, sometimes known as the rich get richer, which is related to addition reactions and alkenes. However, before I do get into that, there's one reaction that I missed off in my last video about the reactions of alkenes. And that is a reaction, it's not quite an addition reaction. It's known as oxidative addition, and it's done using permanganate. Um, it's called oxidative addition because it's both an oxidation reaction and an addition reaction at the same time. Um, so what happens in this reaction is the double bond breaks and we add an OH group, an alcohol, to each carbon. Now this reaction... Permanganate you've probably used before in redox, but where you've used it in redox, you will have acidified it. This occurs under neutral conditions, so no acidification or um, basic conditions. So in these neutral conditions, what we see is that the purple permanganate forms a brown precipitate of manganese dioxide. And this reaction can also be used as an identification test for an alkene. So there's sort of two tests that you can use to identify alkenes. The trick with this one is that if you react permanganate with any kind of alcohol, it will also react, whether under acidic conditions or neutral conditions. So with this reaction, it becomes quite obvious why I recommend you write the reagents over the arrows rather than in, as part of a balanced equation. Because when you write it over the arrow, you don't have to think about balancing it. And if you want to balance this, you've got to balance it as a redox reaction. If you're not balancing it though, you can just show the organic reactant and the organic product. And to do that, the organic product, again, just like I've done with all the other addition reactions, I recommend you start off with that basic structure. We've broken that double bond and that's all we've got in there at the moment. Now with, an, with a, the reaction with permanganate, we get two... OH groups, one onto each carbon. And just please note, always my bond is to the oxygen, never to the hydrogen. Um, this, if we're going to name it, this is known as a diol because it has two alcohol groups, and we would name it as ethan one two diol. Okay, so ethane because we've got two carbons with single bonds between them, and then the diol because we've got two alcohol groups, and the 1-2 to show that one alcohol group is on carbon 1 and one alcohol group is on carbon 2. Now, I'll just briefly mention here too, the reason that we use permanganate under neutral conditions for this reaction is that if you react it under acidified conditions, it's actually powerful enough to break that double bond and so you don't get a diol forming. Um, sorry, strong enough to break the carbon-carbon single bond, so you don't get a diol forming. So the reason that we use neutral permanganate is so that we can actually get that diol as a product. Okay, so now on to my... So Markovnikov's rule states that when you add an asymmetric reagent to an asymmetric alkene, you can have two possible products. And the major product is formed when the hydrogen is added to the carbon that has the largest number of hydrogens. Now, we need to break down what we mean when we're talking about both asymmetric reagents and asymmetric alkenes. So an asymmetric reagent, the ones that you're going to deal with this year, are... HBr, HCl, and H2O. And an asymmetric alkene is one where either there's an odd number of carbons or the double bond is positioned unevenly throughout the molecule. Basically, if you're going to break that double bond, the two halves of the molecule where that double bond were are not going to be identical. Okay. So, in simple terms, or not so simple terms, but in chemistry terms, an asymmetric alkene is one that has no plane of symmetry. So it could be branched, it could have other functional groups on there, or the double bond might not be in the middle of the molecule. 
Okay, so we talk about major and minor products with this type of reaction. Okay, both products are formed, but the major product is the one that is formed in the largest amount. Now all this sounds very complicated, so please let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. So just to demonstrate this, I'm going to use the simplest asymmetric alkene I can, which is propene. Okay, and just with, as with any other addition reaction, to start with, I'm actually going to just draw that basic template. Okay, but I'm going to do it twice. And I know this is slightly tedious, waiting for somebody to draw something on a screen. But bear with me. Okay, so the reason I'm drawing this twice is because I hope you can see that there are two possible products that I can draw here. I can put the H on the first carbon and the Cl, or it could be a bromine or an OH or anything else on the second carbon. Or I can go the other way around and I can put the Cl on the first carbon and the H on the second carbon. Now, if I do this reaction, both of these products will be formed. Okay, but one of them will be formed in a much greater quantity than the other. And so to figure out which one is which, that's when we need to come back to Markovnikov's rule. And Markovnikov's rule states that when we are adding an asymmetric reagent to an asymmetric alkene, the major product will be the one that is formed when the hydrogen is added to the carbon with the most hydrogens. What does that mean? Okay, if we come back over here and we look at our reagents, this carbon here has two hydrogens on it, and this carbon has one hydrogen. And so the major product is formed when the hydrogen atom is added to the carbon with the most hydrogens. So the H is going to come onto here, and the Cl is going to go onto the other side. So this one is our major product. And this one is our minor product. Now exactly how much of major and minor products is produced in each reaction is very dependent on that reaction. But a general way to think about it is roughly 90 to 95% of what is formed will be the major product and probably 5 to 10% will be the minor product in most cases. Not always. Okay, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. It's dependent on the chemicals and the conditions and all sorts of other things. Now the same thing happens whether we're reacting HCl, HBr, or H2O. Okay, doesn't matter which one we're using. So one of the most important things you have to be able to do is you have to be able to identify when two products are going to form. And that comes back to the definition. The structures of the two products, as I've just shown you, and which one is major and minor and why. Okay, now the easy way to try and remember which is which, Markovnikov's rule is sometimes known as the rich become richer. So the carbon that is already rich in hydrogens is going to become richer in hydrogens. Okay, so that's the way I always remember it. And that's it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you again soon.